Okay, AP review problem number two, thermodynamics. Let me get my pen and we'll be ready to begin with. Okay, answer the following questions about glucose. An important biochemical energy source. Write its empirical formula. Empirical formula is the lowest ratio of atoms. Okay, so sometimes we'll have to calculate that, but all they want you to do is look at it and say, what's the lowest ratio? And you see everybody can be divided by 12, um, 6, so you get C1, H, 6, O, 1. Um, the reason they ask for the empirical formula ever, if we do combustion analysis, what we will get is an empirical formula. If we do the percents of all the substances that are formed, we can go back and find what percent each of these are, and we could find its empirical formula. We would need more information to make the molecular formula. We would need um, the molar mass, or maybe we know the molar mass of the um, substance. Okay, that's just a little reminder. In many organisms, glucose is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water, as represented by the following equation. Um, carbon changes its oxidation state. That's why they're saying that. Not that important, but this is what the reaction is. It says a 2.5 gram sample of glucose is in an excess of oxygen. It's placed in a calorimeter, right? You remember the calorimeter, don't you? It had a thermometer and it had a lid and it was insulated and we could check the temperature before and after the reaction. After the reaction was initiated and pro proceeded to completion, the total heat by released by the reaction was calculated to be 39.0 kilojoules. So when we did calorimetry, we were able to figure out what Q was. They're telling us this is Q. But we don't want Q. Q is the amount of heat for this many grams. But what this, what they want us to find... Um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Never mind. We want to calculate the value for delta H in kilojoules per mole. So when we get our Q here, what it's going to be is for 2.5 gram sample. But that is not a mole of sample. So we need to do some dimensional analysis. So we have 2.50 grams of glue. I'm shorten it. And we'll say, well, for... Um, that many, bleh, let me craze myself, okay, this is how many grams of glucose we had, and we know 180 grams is one mole, okay, and that's going to tell us that we had 1.39 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of glue. Cups. Okay, so we got 39.0 kilojoules from our little reaction that gave us our Q. Our Q divided by how many moles is going to give us our units, <laughs> kilojoules per mole. Okay, so when we do all this, we get an answer, I'm saying it's B, and I get minus 2810. Okay, why did I say minus 2810? Because it said it was released by the reaction. And if we want to know what delta H is, we have to figure out if it's released or absorbed. So this is an exothermic process. Okay, except for knowing the molar mass here and changing grams into moles, this was really a logic problem that all you did was say, I need to find kilojoules per mole. I have kilojoules, and I'd better turn the grams into moles. So it was a nice stoichiometry, sensible problem. Okay, so exothermic. We'll need to know that a little bit later. Let's keep going. Okay, when oxygen is not available, glucose can be oxidized by fermentation. Okay, 
The other one we had to add oxygen. Here we're not adding oxygen. We're anaerobic. In that process, ethanol and carbon dioxide are produced as represented by the equation. So here's the delta H of this reaction. And they're saying the value of the Kp for the reaction is this. They want us to find delta G. Now, I'm not going to have you find delta G because we don't have to do that for this AP exam. But I'm going to tell you what equation you need because someday if you take a higher level chemistry class, you're going to need to know how to do this. Delta G is equal to minus RT ln K. Okay, so um, that's how you do it. So you would just plug it in and you know your K so you can find your delta G. All right, then it wants to say what is the value of the standard entropy for this? So we, again, we don't have to do that for this test. So I'm just going to tell you that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. All these are zero, all these are zero, all those are zero. And, um, you know, that is the equation for thermodynamics. And we know the delta H here, and we know what the temperature is, and so we would just plug everything in and find delta S. All right, so we don't need to do that right now, but we do need to know this third problem. We definitely should be able to answer a question like this. Indicate whether the equilibrium constant Okay, for the fermentation reaction, this reaction right here, um, increases, decreases, or remains the same if the temperature is increased. So let's just do a very generic, remember it's products over reactants. Okay, and when we're doing a change of something, we are making, it's supposed to be products on top, sorry. I don't like the way that looked. Okay. Again, again, keeps looking like an R. All right, products over the reactants. So what we want to know is if we increase, decrease, or remain the same if the temperature is increased. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a thermodynamic equation, where I'm going to put the delta H into the equation. It's negative. Negative means that the energy is, it's exo, energy is released, Okay, and so that the energy is a product. Okay, so plus E. I'm just going to say it like that. All right, so whenever we put something in, it makes a shift in the equilibrium. Okay, so if we put energy in, is it going to favor the forward or the reverse reaction? Hmm. Well, it's exothermic. Energy is a product. If we put energy in, it always moves away from whatever we add. Hmm. So if we move away from whatever we add, we're going to have more reactants. So R is going to get big and P is going to get small. Okay, so K decreases. Indicate whether the equilibrium constant for the fermentation Reaction increases, decreases, or remains the same. Okay, K is going to go down. That's how I justified my answer. All right, it's a, we call it an endothermic shift. When we heat it up, it shifts towards the direction that's endothermic. If the forward reaction is exo, the reverse is endo. All right, so the only one we really needed to answer was the third one, but this is how you would have answered one and two. All right, using your answer for part B and the information provided in part C, calculate the value of delta H for the following reaction. <sighs> All right, so what, what did they give us in part B? They gave us a chemical reaction right here. It's our typical chemical reaction, and we know what its delta H is. Okay, so let's rewrite that. I should have brought it over, but I'll just rewrite it right here. Okay. So I have C6H12 6 plus oxygen gives me CO2 plus water. 
make sure I got everything right. I think I have some coefficients I need. Six and six, yep, six, six, six. Okay, and um, the phases are all going to be the same. Uh, this is a liquid. Oops, this is a liquid. Everybody else is gas, except for the sugar. All right, so we have this reaction, and we have another reaction. We have this one. Okay, we want to have ethanol on the left side of the reaction. Do we have ethanol on the left side of the reaction? No. What we're going to do is we're going to put these two together. Let me just rewrite it right here. C6H12. So we'll say this is the one from B and this is the one from C. Plus, nope, nothing plus. Goes to um, 2C2H5OH plus 2CO2. So we know delta H for this one is minus 68. It's kilojoules per mole, but I'm not going to worry about writing it here. And I'm going to go back a second and say the other one is um, minus 2810. Okay, let me just make sure I'm getting all my numbers right. I'm on D. So when was 34? And, okay, all right, so I like all my numbers. They're in kilojoules per mole. So I need to add these two reactions together so they look exactly like this reaction. So um, I like the fact that the oxygen is on the left and the CO2 is on the right and the water is on the right. So I don't think I want to switch this guy around at all. But I have to get rid of this. This has to go. So in order for this to go, it has to cancel with something on the other side. All right, now let's look at the second reaction. We're doing Hess's law, if you hadn't figured it out yet. Hess's law means you can add reactions together to get a new reaction that you haven't done and figure out what its energy is. Okay, so I'm going to want to cancel this guy. So this guy's going to have to come over here. And I also want this guy over on the left. But should this have a 2? This is actually ethanol. Should ethanol have a 2? No. So what is this telling me is I'm going to have to flip. And I'm going to have to divide by 2. Okay, so everything will have to be divided. Let's just make sure. And then, um, what else are we, um, let me just make sure I'm doing everything right. Flip, divide by 2. And then I want my oxygen and water. I don't like what my oxygen is. I have too much oxygen over there. Okay, so I'm going to have to divide this one by 2 as well. Do I want to flip that? Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Okay, and then this one was 1 half. Okay. All right, so let's flip, divide this one by 2. We're going to rewrite B. And we have one half C six H five O six plus divided by two three oxygen arrow three CO two plus three H two O and we divided this by two as well and we get one four O five and it's still a negative. All right, so that's B rewritten. Now we're going to do C rewritten. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip it. So we're going to have, and we're going to divide it by 2. So 2CO2 two is going to become CO2. Okay. And then we have 2C2H5OH, and we're going to get one of those. And then we're going to get um, over here, what do we have left? C6, oops, divided by 2, 1 half, C6, H12, O6. 
All right, you probably did that a lot faster than I did. And this one's going to be divided by 2, and it used to be negative, so now it's going to be positive 34. And those are all kilojoules per mole, but I'm having a really hard time controlling my pen today. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's turn it back to the blue pen. We want to get rid of everything we can and add together everything else. So let's go all the way down. All right, CO2. We're going to remove one of these, and that would make this into a 2. Okay, so we have one ethanol over here, nothing cancels it. Okay, we have a half of a sugar here and a half of a sugar here, those go away. And then let's see what else we have. Nothing. We have C2H5OH, we have 3O2, we have 2CO2 and we have 3H2O. Oh, we're beautiful. So we're going to add all this together as well. So when we add that together, we're going to get minus 1370. Is there a delta H for this reaction? But they want more than that. They wanted you to show all this work. So when we're all done, C2. Okay, and that is a proof of S's law, which shows us how we can get the energy for this chemical reaction. Okay, so that's C, um, and that was D. Okay, let's make sure. Okay, these were the equations, and that was D. I think that's everything we needed for this problem. Yes, that's it. Thank you.